In our last lesson, we learned about reflections. Today, we're going to learn about translations. Translations, you can think of that as being a slide. You're going to take an object and move it to a new location, but the orientation of the object is going to stay the same. With reflections, the object could turn, it could flip, it could kind of change how it was oriented on the paper or on the graph, but it still had all of its characteristics. Remember, it re retained its congruency. Same thing is going to be true for translations. They're going to retain their, con their congruency. However, their orientation is also not going to change. If you look at the baseball picture here, the baseball in the lower left was translated to the, up here to the right. Notice how the seams of the baseball open up and downward. They didn't change. They're still opening upward and downward. That's true about the volleyball. It's true about the hockey puck. It's true about the football and all the other balls in that picture, they have not changed their orientation. If I change this baseball and rotated it like that, I could no longer call this a translation because it now does not have the same orientation. Now instead of opening upwards, the seams are actually kind of opening towards the side. That would no longer be called a translation. A translation is simply a transformation that moves all points of a figure the same distance and in the same direction. In this picture, the yellow triangle, every point has been translated to the right 8 units and down 4 units. If you look at point C, we go 8 right and down 4. That would be our translation. We have symbols that we use for this. When we talk about it symbolically, it is written out as you see on the screen. The original point XY was translated to the new location X plus 8, that's our 8 units to the right, and Y minus 4, that would be our 4 units that it was moved down. Same is true now with every point. B moves 8 right down 4, and D moves 8 right and down 4. They all have to move the exact same amount in the exact same direction in order to be a translation. Let's try one. Triangle PQR has been translated using the following translation. XY, the original triangle, has been translated to X plus 3, Y minus 2. Find triangle P primed, Q primed, R primed, that is the notation that we use whenever a point is moved. Every time a point is moved, we add an apostrophe. So if the point P was moved twice, the second time it was moved would actually have two little apostrophes there. Then graph it. First thing we need to do is put the original picture onto the graph. So we need a dot at negative 2, positive 5. So negative 2 and then positive 5. There's our dot for P. Then we have dot Q, which is at 1, 7. 1 and then up 7 and lastly we have R which is at negative 3 positive 1. There's our original shape. We can connect it up and make it into an actual triangle like the picture or the information tells us and there we have our triangle. We have our original triangle here, which is represented by the three red dots and the black line containing them, and now we're going to translate that triangle to its new location. We're using the translation vector or translation of 3 on the x minus 2 on the y. Let's start with the point on the top here. It was at 1, 7. We're going to go 3 to the right, 1, 2, 3, then down 2. There's our new location. Our original point would be Q. Our new point would be Q primed. We'll label those in a moment. Next, we need to move the point here that was at negative 2, positive 5. It was at negative 2, positive 5. I need to move it 3 to the right and then down 2. There's our new point. And lastly, we're going to move the point that was at negative 3, positive 1. And we again move this 3 to the right, 1, 2, 3 to the right, and down 2. 
again, if we connect these points, we should have two white triangles that look exactly the same. They should not have changed anything other than if you'd think of it as sliding it down the paper. If we look at our triangle here, we had Q. Where we moved it to would be labeled Q primed. We had the point R. We move that, it'd be called R primed. And lastly, we had point P, which gets moved, and it's called point P primed. That's a translation. Here's a different type of question. Point P, which is at 8, 3, has been translated to P primed, which is at 2, 7. Find the coordinate form of the translation. What this question is asking you to find is that. That's the coordinate form of the translation. First, let's put our dots in the graph. We are at 8 and up 3. There would be our original point P. Our point P has been translated to 2, 7. That would be called P primed. We know that we're going to have to move the X and move the Y. What we need to figure out is how we're moving it. Let's just look at the X. To get from P to P primed, I need to go backwards. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. That means I'm going to subtract 6. Then once I've gone backwards 6, I need to go up 1, 2, 3, 4. So I'm going to rise 4. And you're done. There's the coordinate form of the translation. That is it for the translation section. Make sure if you have any questions, please bring them to class.